Hi everybody, Miles Yim here with ESPN Esports and joining me in the studio is Bill Trinan from Nintendo of America, the Senior Director of Product Marketing. That's I'm glad I got that title right. <laughs> uh, we worked on it backstage. Uh, and today we will be playing some of the game that is being talked about by pretty much everybody, no matter what esports community you belong to. It is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, the fifth game in this venerable series that I've been paying attention to since 1999 when I saw the first commercial on television with those four characters dancing together to the turtles happy together. <laughs> Let's get into it, Bill. Let's get into it. <laughs> so we don't have every character unlocked yet, unfortunately. That's something I have to take up with Nintendo. We couldn't get an unlocked system for, for this piece. You know, we didn't, we didn't want to spoil the fun of <laughs> playing through the game and unlocking all of these characters. You know, the biggest crossover event in video gaming history. Absolutely. <laughs> A roster that spans over 76 before DLC characters. That's correct. Uh, we've got, oh, 20 some odd to pick. Is there anyone you, you gravitate towards immediately of these starters? Uh, you know, I have, I'm a long time Yoshi player, so uh, I'm a big fan of Yoshi, but given that this is, uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna take the game through its paces, I figure start off with Mario. Okay. Kind of the traditional uh, Nintendo mascot. Fantastic, Let, let's, uh, let's do a little Link action. This is Link Breath of the Wild style. Uh, and I'll act, then I'll go Super Mario Odyssey style, and it's a rematch of Game of the Year from last year's uh, Game Awards. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, let's get this started. So talking about the roster a little bit, obviously we haven't unlocked all of them, but with so many characters, how were, how were decisions made as to which characters made the roster and which ones did not? Uh, for the most part, you know, it's, uh, it's a decision on the development side. Mr. Masahiro Sakurai, who's the director of the game uh, and has been since the original version, um, here over on the NOA side, we, uh, both the localization team, the product marketing team, kind of worked to provide some feedback to the development team on characters that might be interesting or appealing for audiences here, and then they'll take that into consideration and look at uh, who they want to bring back or who they want to add. Obviously, the, the main objective with this game was to bring back the complete roster that of every character that's ever appeared in a Smash Brothers game. And then they've added a few others on top of that. So with so many characters in this game, and uh, Joker from Persona 5 recently announced at the Game Awards, who can't be in this game anymore? <laughs> it seems like everybody's actually invited, no matter if you're a Nintendo uh, specific property or not. Well, I think, you know, that's kind of the, uh, we introduced the game at E3 with the slogan, everyone is here and everyone just keeps growing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Piranha Plant, Joker, you know, and there's obviously, there's more DLC fighters coming, a total of uh, five that uh, we've got planned and we'll have more information on some of the rest of them. Uh, maybe further down the road, but people can look forward at least to those first two new ones uh, coming uh, fairly soon. I can't get any spoilers from you for the next DLC characters. I would love to, <laughs> but uh, I, would, uh, I would be in big trouble if I did that. I don't <laughs> doubt it. The little flourishes, the little touches, the silhouettes, the final hit, the fact that you can see the score when somebody loses a stock, it's it feels like a fighting game now. And for Smash Brothers in particular, it's always been interesting, the perspective from Nintendo, is this a party game or is this a fighting game? And it seems like with Ultimate, you guys are really splitting the difference. You can have that party game atmosphere, but also for the serious fighting game players at competitive tournaments like EVO, there is that competitive aspect to it. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, Smash Brothers obviously has always had that competitive aspect to it, and that's really what's allowed the community to kind of grow and flourish the way that it has. Um, Certainly, the competitive community is one group that plays this game, but there's obviously a very large audience of fans who love everything about the game just because it is sort of that kind of ultimate compendium of Nintendo lore. Mm -hmm. um, and that audience is one that, you know, you may have people who are just button mashing and having fun with it. You may have people who are, you know, kind of the... Uh, the filthy casuals, as some like to call them, who uh, <laughs> like me. Yeah, <laughs> I fit in that category as well. Um, uh, but uh, 
I think that that party atmosphere and of course the uh, the four player and since the Wii U game even the eight player still remains uh, a really important part. And I think one thing that we've seen with the reviews that have come out over the last couple days really is the excitement that people have for the game overall, but also you're seeing a lot of people just really amazed at the single player content that has been built into the game. Oh, that is King K. Rool. That is King K. Rool, another new character. That's the other thing too, is he does have a, you know, kind of a unique arc to his, uh, his mid-air jump. Mm -hmm. uh, can catch you dangerously in narrow corridors or kind of those gaps between platforms. K.K. Rool's an interesting character and a good example of sort of mechanics that uh -oh. aren't necessarily... Uh-oh, uh-oh, no! Recover, recover, there it is! There we go. <laughs> He's an example of it. Oh, oh, no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> For shame. <laughs>